Hey fellow Vodwares, it's Angry Tartul and in this video I want to share with you what are the best mods for your power armor and someone suggested it to me to make a tier base like the most useful mod first and then whatever is less useful instead than going power armor part but by power armor part then we'll do it this way and you let me know if it's better or if you prefer if I just go over all the mods in order if we'll be doing something like that in the future. And now let's jump straight into the video. And as always, I was testing those power armor mods. My review is not based on mod description that you can see when you modify power armor. My review is based on actual usefulness of those mods. Then first, we'll go over S tier, what means the best possible modifications. A quick disclaimer, of course, your tier of usefulness can be different than mine and that's fine if you know what you are using that's all that matter but based on my experience s tier there is nothing for the head and for the torso emergency protocols that's the s tier it's super powerful when you are low health you are taking 50 percent reduced damage it's amazing, taking into consideration how the damage in this game is calculated. In practice, you are taking even less than half of the damage when you are below 20% health. Uh, speed increase does not apply if you already have speed demon. And then we have a jetpack. This one, because of crazy utility, for me, it's S tier as well as emergency protocols. And those two are the S tier, there is no more S tier mods for Torzo. And there is no S tier for arms in my opinion. And if we go into the legs, S tier is calibrated shocks. The extra carry weight capacity, 100 if you have both legs modified, that's incredibly helpful. And now let's go over A tier modification. And here we have something for the head. For the A tier, it's targeting HUD or internal database. Targeting HUD is very nice, it basically highlights your targets on red, it's kind of useful, I like it. Or internal database, it increases your intelligence by 2, but as we all know, intelligence is boosting experience in this game, which means it's like about 5, maybe 6% free boost for your experience all the time when you have this helmet equipped. It's good enough for me to make it A tier. Now for the torso A tier, this will be core assembly. It's basically about 50% boost to your AP regeneration. Very handy. Kinetic dynamo that will be as well. A tier, especially if you are using dodgy, this will allow you to regenerate 10 AP whenever you are being hit. Medic pump. A tier as well for me. It was, I will make it S tier if not one fact. It can only use regular steam packs. Cannot use diluted ones, cannot use super steam packs. But what good about medic pump and what not stated in here, it's basically spam steam packs and prevent you from dying as long as you have steam packs. It's trying to keep your health above 60% and there is no cooldown on those steam packs. It's basically steam pack after steam pack as long as you have regular steam packs. And I see usefulness in it, although if this will allow us to use the looted ones, it will be S tier. Unfortunately, only regular one, then for A tier. And now for the arms, but only if you are a melee build, then A T will be optimized bracers, as basically it reduces your AP cost for power attacking, what's very handy if you are a melee build with a power armor. Otherwise, there is nothing in arms that will be A tier if you are not melee. Nothing for legs that will make it into A tier. I want this guy anyway to be comprehensive, then now we'll go over B tier and C tier. For the B tier for torso, reactive plates, kind of handy. You will deal damage to anything that is attacking you with melee damage. 50% of its attack will be reflected back. Downside it doesn't seem to reduce damage that you are taking, therefore it's not crazy useful. It's why B tier. Motion assist servos. That's because this modification doesn't require any flags to put it on your power armor and it gives you two strength. Then motion assist servo will be B tier and early game very useful, especially for melee character. 
Tesla coils. It's pretty fun to use. It do energy damage. Basically, Tesla arcs to enemies that are nearby without you doing anything. It's not a crazy damage, but good enough to tag some mobs and you don't need to actively do it. Well, that rebar, that will be beat here as well. It's similar to reactive plates. It's a poor man version of reactive plates, doesn't require flux. And there will be nothing in B tier for head or arms, then let's go for the legs. And for B tier we'll get, we have kinetic servos. It does offer quite nice AP refresh speed, but only when you are moving, that's a downside. If you modify both legs, it's about the same AP region as core assembly torso, but you need to be moving for this region to work. And you need to be actually moving. If you walk into the wall, it will not work. And now let's go over infamous mods that I put into C tier that are really bad or almost useless. For the head, we have sensor array. It gives you two perception. What in this game gives you almost nothing in return. Then you have two more perception to be more happy than it's C tier. For the torso C tier, we have blood cleanser. Reduces chance for addiction from drugs. Why sit here? Because it not even remove the chance, it reduces it, plus addictal is everywhere, plus if you are a heavy drug user, you are probably junkies build, then you don't want or don't care about reduced chance to, ad to get addicted. For the legs, sit here, optimize servers, it's about 10% less AP cost while sprinting per leg, barely noticeable, it is working but barely noticeable, that's why sit here. There are better options. Explosive vent. Increase damage radius for impact landing. Why sit here? Because impact landing in this game is doing zero damage. Increased radius of doing zero damage. It's not really useful for anything. You still do zero damage and you cannot even figure out how much this radius is increased because there is no way to measure that. Overdrive servos. Increase sprint speed at additional action point cost. If you already have speed demon, increased speed will not happen. Increased action point cost will always apply. That's the worst possible thing you can get. Just give yourself a speed demon. And even if you don't want to use any mutation, I don't think this trade-off is worth it. And now for the arms, C tier hydraulic braces. Increase an arm damage. You are going from almost no damage with your punch to still almost no damage with your punch. Rusty Knuckles, you still do almost no damage with your punch and there is slight bleeding damage that do almost nothing. Then you go from almost nothing to a little bit more than almost nothing with those two mods. And that concludes modifications for power armor. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For most of you it's probably already well known what works on power armor and what doesn't and what you want. But for new players I hope it will be helpful and I will keep revisiting this topic if Bethesda will do something with those power armor mods if there will be any changes. Like I would like to see more modifications to be honest and some of currently not really working to be fixed or modify a little bit to be more useful. Like. Medic Spump, please let me use it with diluted stims. And as always, thank you a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one.